Google shows off its competitor to Microsoft 365 Copilot at its I.O. conference this week. So I'm going to look at what Google announced and what Microsoft revealed about its own AI this week as it enters wider testing. Hello, my name is Russell Smith and I'm Editorial Director of the Petri IT Knowledge Base. So Google made quite a lot of announcements at its AI conference this week connected to artificial intelligence. Now all of these features and the features that are also coming to programmers for those using the Google Cloud Platform come under the umbrella of Duet AI. Now I want to start off with Google Bard because obviously Google Bard developed a bit of a reputation after a disastrous presentation in Paris where the press noticed some, you know, irregularities, shall we say, in some of the answers that Bard provided during the presentation. Now, we haven't heard very much from Google really about all of this stuff since then, but Microsoft has been saying quite a lot about its Bing Chat and Microsoft 365 Copilot as recently as this week, in fact, and I'll come on to Copilot in a little bit. But the first big thing that Google announced is that they're updating their BARD technology to work with an updated language model called Palm 2. And one of the things that they highlighted was that they've been able to teach the AI up to 20 different languages, programming languages, including C++ and Python. And they highlighted some of the things that this is now going to be able to do for programmers. Now, we know that Bing Chat has been working off Chat GPT-4 ever since it was premiered in January. Now, Google did mention something called DeepMind, which is a new language model that they're working on, which they hope will challenge Chat GPT-4. Now, Google is updating the search experience again to compete with what Microsoft has been doing with Bing Chat. And they're going to be adding something called a search generative experience. So what they're aiming to do with this is add concise, informational, natural language answers to any query that you make in Google. And they hope that it's going to help with buying decisions. So shopping, that's also something that Microsoft is big on with Bing and, of course, Bing Rewards. So while Google is talking about all of these updates that it's going to be bringing to Google, of course, Microsoft has had all of this stuff available in Bing Chat for some time now. And the preview is open to anybody. But Google hasn't made this technology available yet to end users. But they're opening a new program called Search Labs, which you can sign up to at this stage. You just get added to a waiting list. But much like the Bing preview, they will gradually open up this technology to allow you to see how it works. And I'll put the link to Search Labs in the description of the video below. So Microsoft has been talking about its Microsoft 365 Copilot, I think, since about March. And as I said previously, they did make an announcement about that just ahead of Google's I.O. conference this week. Now, Aparna Papu, who's the vice president of engineering at Google, came onto the stage and started to talk about some of the things that Google is planning to add to Google Workspace to compete with Microsoft Copilot. And these are things that are going to be added to applications like Gmail, Sheets and Slides. Now, she started off with talking about a feature called Help Me Write that's going to be added to Gmail. And of course, this pretty much does what we've seen Microsoft demonstrating over the past few months. It will help you to write an email, to refine it so that you get the right tone and all that kind of thing. And, you know, just help you to generate ideas and get you started and then to refine the end result. Now, Aparna demonstrated all of this uh, as part of the conference this week. And what was quite telling, I thought, that after the demonstration, she kind of had to almost prompt the audience to applaud because they just kind of sat there and looked at it. But there was just silence <laughs> after the demonstration. And I thought that was quite telling. All needs saving you a ton of time and effort. Next. So that was a little bit awkward, yes? Yeah? So I think the problem is that because Microsoft has already demonstrated this stuff already several months ago, we're already used to seeing this. You know, we've seen all of this stuff before, and Google isn't really showing us anything new here, of course. And she went on to demonstrate other features, like there was a feature in Google Sheets that basically 
where you just describe with natural language what you want to do. So she basically used the example of a dog sitting business. So she just described, you know, can you make a schedule for the different clients with the different rates that I charge those clients? And she described all that in natural language. And then Sheets just went away and created a sample template, essentially, which you can then, of course, go on to refine yourself. And there are other features, things like help me visualize in Sheets, which is obviously all very similar to what Microsoft is talking about across their suite of 365 applications like PowerPoint, Outlook, Word. And of course, Microsoft Designer, which was first talked about publicly, really, by Microsoft a few weeks ago. There are other things coming like the magic editor in Google Photos, which will be able to do things like remove unwanted backgrounds or objects, uh, change the lighting using artificial intelligence. So what's going on with Copilot? So Microsoft has been testing this, I think, with a limited number of their clients, I think about 20 clients over the last couple of months since they announced it back in, I think it was March or February, I don't remember exactly when, but they're now expanding this program. It's going to be called the Microsoft 365 Copilot Early Access Program, and they're expanding it to, I think, 600 different businesses and organizations, but it's going to be invitation only, and you're going to have to pay to use it. So that's interesting and a little bit disappointing, I guess, for those who were hoping we'd get some kind of uh, early access to that for everybody around this stage. But that's not going to happen at the moment. But they did announce this week that they're expanding Copilot to some other applications. So Whiteboard and OneNote are going to be getting access to Copilot integrated into those applications for so doing things like, you know, generating ideas, organizing ideas into themes and creating designs and helping to bring your content to life. And also you'll be able to use Copilot to summarize things that you have on a whiteboard or on a OneNote page. And also that summarization feature is coming to loop. DALI, which is the image generator that, of course, is you know, connected to OpenAI, is coming to PowerPoint. And that's something, of course, that Microsoft uses in Microsoft Designer as well. And Viva is getting natural language AI capabilities, so you'll be able to use it to plan a learning journey to help you to upskill or maybe to schedule time for assigned training, for instance. That's all really useful stuff in Viva as well. Microsoft also talked about something called the semantic index. Now, I like to think of this as the satanic index, but unfortunately, it's not the satanic index. It's the semantic index. And basically, this is going to be a feature that's only available to organizations that have an E3 or an E5 plan. And this is going to help to add more context to search. So, for instance, rather than just you having to search for information using particular keywords, it's going to allow you to search and to surface information about things where information is connected. So, you know, when we think about something, of course, we understand, I don't know, that cameras and lighting and recording equipment, that all of these things are connected. So it builds a complex map of your organization and tries to join the dots between all of that information. So for instance, it might be that if you're searching for a sales report, it's able to understand, well, who produces that sales report every month? Where is it stored? What application do they use? You now, all of that information that, you know, a person might know. Now, Microsoft has said this isn't only to benefit the AI features in Microsoft 365. This will also apply to just standard searches to help you with those as well. But it's only going to be for those who pay for it. So, of course, that brings up the question, well, you know, how is all of this going to work in terms of pricing with Google Workspace, with Microsoft 365? And the answer is at the moment, we don't know. So, of course, you know, we already know the semantic index is not going to be available to everybody. But at least with Microsoft 365, I would expect the basic Copilot features to be available to any user that has a business plan subscription. And of course, then you're going to have to pay extra for the really fancy stuff. So while these demonstrations look impressive from Google and from Microsoft, you know, to be honest, I think the Microsoft demonstrations were, were better a bit more impressive, you know, providing all of this stuff actually works until we can actually see it and get hold of it and use it. We're not really going to be able to 
test whether this stuff is really useful or not, because a demonstration is obviously one thing and making use of it in real life is another, you know, the proof is in the pudding, but we'll, you know, see how all that comes about. Now, I think that we'll get access to this in a wider public preview from Microsoft, at least, later this year. You know, it might not become generally available this year in terms of kind of, well, it's finished and it's really ready, but I think we'll get this in preview much like we've had Bing Chat available in preview. But Microsoft seems to be way ahead at this stage. I think their demos are better, just more impressive. What Google showed, you know, it was okay. Of course, it's also impressive, but unfortunately, Microsoft is just beating them uh, at the moment in terms of getting this stuff out there and at least demoed faster. And they seem to be further ahead with actually testing this stuff with real clients. But we'll see how all of this unfolds. One other piece of news that I wanted to cover this week, and that is the Rust developments in the Windows kernel. If you remember back to last week's video, you'll remember that I was talking about how Microsoft is planning to replace a lot of the C code in the kernel with Rust because it's basically as performance as C, but it's a memory safe language, so it really helps to improve security. And it was Mark Rusinovich who posted uh, on Twitter, I think it was yesterday, that Windows Insiders now have access to a version of the Windows kernel that is actively using Rust. So this stuff is, you know, live, dangerous and re real. And I guess this will become into a stable version of Windows 11 probably sometime later this year, maybe for the feature update that we're going to get in the fall. We'll see. So if you're on an insider build, then, well, you've already got rust in the Windows kernel, it seems. Uh, but that's really interesting stuff and a fairly major development, of course, for the security of Windows. And on that note, it seems like I should leave you with that video. If you want more information about how Microsoft is planning to use Rust in the Windows kernel, then do check that out. If you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then do subscribe to the channel. But that's it from me this week, and I'll see you next time.